the terminal it's amazing it's great it's probably my number one utility when i'm working and coding and doing stuff it really for years even since the dawn of computing has been probably the number one thing that a computer super user needs for working effectively and programming programs. And before we go too much further, there's a few definitions we need to clearly define here. So the most outside thing in this box of stuff is the terminal. The terminal is what gives you the command line and really it's just emulating some text to give you that command line and render out all that text that is printing out that you're interacting with. And that command line is a shell. That could be bash or z shell or corn or sh if you're a psycho or fish if you really don't care and just want it to work out of the box all that gets kind of wrapped up in this terminal program that you launch and boom there's the command line and a lot of that is sort of abstracted away for you but there's a few essential details in there that makes selecting the right terminal important so let's talk about my choices for a terminal in different scenarios and different situations, which they vary from time to time. Now, when I'm talking about the terminal and my terminal workflows, it's very important to remember that a lot of my workflows revolve around Tmux. And Tmux is a terminal multiplexer. It's like Inception. We have terminals within terminals. And Tmux is really what gives me the nesting of windows and panels inside of those windows. And I admit that I have done this is Tmux within Tmux and the inception can go like insanely deep here. That means I'm not going to be talking about terminals that do that out of the box, like Gnome Terminator or Tilex. I'm not gonna be talking about those because I just don't need those features and I don't need the bloat. My terminals that I recommend that I really like are really fast and give me that ability to do Tmux really easily within a very simple platform. The first one that I want to talk about here is ST, and this is the very basic terminal from Suckless. It is really stripped down, like has almost no features. It basically just gives you the command line, and that's fine, and you can do some configuration with it. But if we quickly look at the size of this thing, we can do this command under user bin st, we can see that it's only 94K. That is so small. It's tiny compared to every other terminal I've ever used. That's the only reason it's on this list is it's incredibly small. If we compare that to Alacrity, which is this terminal that I'm using here, this is about 6.2 megabytes. That's orders of magnitude so much bigger than ST. So the only reason ST is on this list from Suckless is because it's so small. It has almost no features, but sometimes you need that on a system that doesn't have a lot of disk space, doesn't have a lot of capability to run a really big, powerful terminal. So ST is on this list as like the most simple thing ever, the, the smallest, most simple thing possible. The next one that I do think is worth talking about is just the default terminal. The default terminal gives you most everything that you would need from a terminal and at least enables you to bootstrap a bunch of other stuff so you can get started with all the other software you might want to install on a new system or a different terminal. This is the default GNOME terminal that comes with Pop! OS. It's great. It's fine. And I've also used in the past the default terminal that comes with Mac OS. It's fine. It's great. It's small. It's fast enough. And really, that's the biggest point here is that these default terminals can actually be just fine when you integrate them with a bunch of other software on the command line. So worth mentioning, especially on a pared down system or if you're SSHing into a desktop or something, the default terminal is just fine. You don't need to install some fancy new terminal on some session that you're getting on. The default one is just fine. All right, now we're really getting into the meat and potatoes here. This one, iTerm2, is what I personally use for work on my work MacBook. And realistically, iTerm2 is probably what most MacBook users are using for a terminal. The default terminal is fine, again, and it's small and fast enough, but iTerm2 gives you so many good options for customization, shell integration, and all this stuff that makes your life way easier. 
I can't show it to you here because this is my Linux desktop and hence why I am not using iTerm2. But if iTerm2 cross built to Linux or Windows or something, that would be incredible. And I would definitely use it on probably most platforms. The other thing that makes iTerm2 really great are all of the community plugins and color schemes and just things that people have built to make integrating with iTerm2 really, really awesome. For example, here's just a giant dump of really great color schemes for iTerm2. Everything from absolutely disgusting to, hey, I would maybe use that. It's here, somebody's built it for iTerm2. It's just a color scheme, so you could probably import it to anything, but there's a giant community around iTerm2. So if you can think of it and you need it, somebody's probably already built it for iTerm2. It's awesome. So those are all good and well, but the next two, I would say, are probably my favorite as far as innovativeness and I guess their feature sets, since they are both very unique and I use them both on and off on my Linux desktop. The first one here that I really like is Kitty. And Kitty is a GPU accelerated terminal that is written in Python and also has a very, very good community around it and is really, really fast, which I really like. One of the things I said there that's really important to keep in mind is that Kitty is a GPU accelerated terminal. Amazing, right? GPU accelerated. Really, it's just a fancy term for the GPU is used to render the text. So if I do something and then it renders that text, it's actually using the graphics processing unit, be it a dedicated GPU or an integrated GPU on the CPU. It's using the graphics portion of the compute to actually render all that stuff. One of the things you might be asking is why in the hell would I need to use a GPU to render the text on my terminal? It's, it's not a lot, right? It's actually not that much. Well, you'd be surprised. When you start doing stuff with flying around files and I mean, Lord knows who, what else? Like, oh, I need to get in here and render all this stuff and paging down. That's actually a lot of text to render all at once, especially when you're doing stuff in a terminal-based CLI editor like Vim or NeoVim. That can end up being a ton of text to actually render. That can be so much text to render that you may see latency and slowdowns on a non-GPU accelerated terminal. So I really like Kitty because it's, it's just fast. It's really fast, which actually brings me to my number one choice typically is Alacrity. Alacrity is also a GPU accelerated terminal written in Rust that is very fast and has just the right subset of features that I need. There are some things that it's missing that it, the maintainers just won't do. One example is a background image instead of just the black background. The Alacrity maintainers just won't do that. There's been an issue that's been open forever that they've just said, they're not gonna add that feature. So if I really wanted to do something like that, I'll go over to Kitty because Kitty has a much better subset of features and is also just about as fast. But in my experience, Alacrity is just a tiny bit faster, maybe, it really depends. And again, this is when you're doing stuff with, you know, rendering a bunch of stuff via some CLI editor like NeoVim or, you know, anything else that's gonna take up the entire terminal and constantly needs to be refreshing. That's really what's happening here is it's constantly refreshing as you're doing this kind of stuff, like flying around these kind of files. That's just a constant refresh that it needs the GPU for to be as fast as it is without latency. So I really like Alacrity, it's really fast, just the right subset of features for me, but Kitty is really good when there's some additional things that I want, some of maybe the flavor of iTerm that I'm not gonna get on Linux. And then I do like iTerm 2 quite a bit for my work on a MacBook. Let's talk about two terminals that I think are very interesting that I think need to prove themselves a little bit and maybe I'm a bit hesitant on, but I'm definitely keeping my eye on. Number one is Hyper. Hyper is very interesting. I tried it early on. It was a bit broken on Linux. Maybe it's better these days. But Hyper is a terminal built on Electron using HTML, CSS, JavaScript. It's it's built on web technologies, sort of like how VS Code is built on it. That's maybe a problem. <laughs> Electron-based apps are uh, definitely known to eat up a ton of memory, CPU, uh, system resources. Opening up VS Code, for example, 
that just eats up so many system resources. But if VS Code has shown us anything, it's that you can give a really great user experience while sacrificing some of those system resources. So I'm keeping my eye on this one because it could mature, grow up, and end up being a really, really fantastic platform to do all kinds of different stuff. One of the things I'm cautiously optimistic about for Hyper is that its extensions are available on NPM. That means that you could install an extension to Hyper itself, and since it's Electron-based, it could be just about anything. You could install that extension via NPM and get a bunch of new functionality. Think again VS Code. VS Code is very much so the same way, where people are building extensions using a very well-known stack with TypeScript, web technologies, all that stuff. So we could see a very cool ecosystem grow up out of the hyper uh, extensions, NPM packaging stuff. But then they're using NPM. That's what makes me sort of cautious. NPM can definitely be known for its kind of tangle of webs of dependencies and dependency nasty injections and things. But I'm also cautiously optimistic about that because GitHub has now taken ownership of NPM and hopefully that ecosystem continues to just get better and better and better. The next terminal that I'm keeping my eye on but I'm cautiously optimistic about is Warp. Warp looks very cool, very interesting in the sense that they're trying to do a bunch of really sort of cutting edge stuff with the user experience itself. You can see here all this stuff it's doing with look back search, they got this like crazy multi-cursor thing going on. There's an AI command search thing built into it. Very cool, very cutting edge. The thing that makes me a bit iffy is the pricing model and maybe the user agreement side of it with something like this. The reason I like using technologies that are free and open source and available for me to use and hack on is that one, there's usually a very permissible license on them so I can break them and use them however the heck I want. And two, I can be pretty assured, especially if I'm looking at the code for a lot of these things, that they're not gathering a bunch of telemetry on me and shilling that out to some company or something. So Warp seems very interesting to me. It has a lot of the really cool tellings of a nice user experience, uh, but I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm not sure what this will actually end up being like, but. Uh, Definitely interested in trying it in the future as it continues to mature. In the end, use whatever the heck you want. It really doesn't matter. There's different features for different terminals, and there's a whole subset of terminals that I just left out because they don't work for my workflows. These are the ones that I like. These are the ones that I'm keeping my eye on. Use the one that works best for you and that fits your workflow and helps you be more productive. But as always, go into almost anything with an open mind and try something new. Maybe I'll try some of the new terminals that maybe don't work very well with a tmux workflow because I've, I've i've just been so ingrained with using tmux for so long so give a couple of these a try let me know in the comments what you think and i will catch you all next time by the way what do you think of the new camera new setup new everything let me know what you think about that in the comments and i'll catch you next time okay peace everybody